this is the only video you'll ever need to learn the data analysis process. I'm going to share the six simple steps a data analyst will go through. You don't need any experience with data analysis to understand these steps. So let's get started. In the first step of the data analysis process, we need to define our objectives, which are the goals of our analysis. This is absolutely critical because it will guide the entire analysis and make sure that we focus on the right things. There are often a lot of conclusions that can be drawn from the data, but we only need what's relevant for our task at hand. That is why we define the question or the problem they're trying to solve. And in some cases, it's clear right away, but often you'll have to communicate with stakeholders in an attempt to figure out the underlying question we're trying to answer. In some cases, you might formulate a hypothesis that you wish to test. You believe that you should stock 300% more inventory to prepare for Black Friday. That's a pretty good hypothesis. Now go and check the actual data from past years, go and verify it, and adjust your recommendations accordingly. The next step is to gather the data that you need. Now data can be in all sorts of forms and some are way easier to gather and work with than others. Your job here in the data analysis process is to identify these different sources where your data exists. It could be in an online database, it could be company records that you've stored in the past that already exist in the company, or it could be in some other public data set. Many organizations and governments perform studies and publish this data for anyone to use, of course, sometimes selling it. And and in some cases, you might have to conduct surveys or interviews yourself to get the data that you need. Let's say that you want to know what your customers think about your company. Then it's probably a good idea to collect that yourself because otherwise you're not going to find it anywhere. You can also scrape and collect data from websites and the internet, but that's a whole different realm. In all cases, it's very important to verify the usage rights of the data to make sure that you stay within the legal frameworks or issues could come up creeping up. There have been a lot of noise about recent development in AI and how that complies with data privacy laws and different copyright laws and other ethical guidelines in general. And I think it's going to be really interesting to see what happens there. Now, it's also critical that you understand the size and the form of the data to ensure that you have the means to store and process it. For more advanced projects, this is where a data engineer may come in who kind of works with the infrastructure and collecting of data and more specifically. The next step in the data analysis process is to clean our data. And the thing is, our analysis is really only as good as our data allows it to be. And if our data contains errors or other issues, it could lead to bad analysis and therefore bad decision making. So let's avoid that. Now, there are a couple of ways to go about this. And one way is to start looking for obvious errors in the data right away and correct them. But sometimes the errors are not as obvious and there are techniques to deal with that. But it's not just about removing errors. I mean, sometimes we're missing entire parts of our data. Let's say that we have a customer with no email address, no phone number, nothing. Then we really don't have a complete customer record in our data. And we have to consider whether we could try to fix this and recover some of the information or just delete the entire customer from our data set. There are different ways to deal with it depending on the circumstances. Another error that often comes up is about formats and data comes in lots of different formats and we need them to be consistent so that we're able to compare customer purchase dates with each other. For example, they need to be in the same date format. This is called standardization. And there's also the aspect of duplicates. I mean, a customer could have been entered into the database twice when they buy, when they bought two different things. And we also have to remove these duplicates or we'll go and spend money and think that we have more customers than we actually have. All right, so now the data is as clean as possible. So we can move on to data processing. We begin this step with something called a data transformation. And this basically includes modifying data to a suitable format or a structure that we can use for analysis. The data is already clean, and now it's just about getting it into the right format. We can do simple transformations in Excel using pivot tables or way more advanced transformations using, for example, popular programming languages like R and Python. This is also where we start to organize data in a meaningful order and try to filter out irrelevant parts of our data set. Because a data set can be huge and have lots of different things we can look at. But if we're only trying to answer or analyze a specific part, then it doesn't make sense to look at everything at the same time. It's just going to get way too messy. So that is why we sort and filter the data to show exactly what we need for our upcoming analysis in the best possible way. You can also group parts of your data into categories or smaller segments to do specific analysis on those, which is called a data segmentation. And a really important term you should know is data aggregation. 
This is about summarizing data. For example, in Excel, we could do this using a simple formula to calculate the average of a column or the total. That is a form of summarizing, a form of data aggregation. Now we're finally at the analyze step where we get to draw our conclusions and acquire insights from our data. And now there are many different forms of analysis techniques and based on your initial question or problem, as well as the insights you're trying to get and the tools you have available, you can decide which one to go for. Often when you have a data set, you'll want to spend some more time trying to understand it better first and then decide to do what's next. And this form of analysis is called exploratory data analysis or EDA. We also have descriptive analysis, which is the basic and commonly used technique used to understand the past or the current state of something. There's also predictive analysis, and surprisingly, it is used to make predictions based on past data. There's also time series analysis, which is focusing on how different variables change over time. And again, these are just some common examples. There are many different analytical techniques, and you'll have to find one that works for you. Moving on to the next step of the data analysis process, but this one is a little bit different because for a long time now we've just dealt with the data and tried to extract useful insights, but now it's time to actually share them with our stakeholders, our boss, our clients, colleagues, whatever. Because nothing that we find is going to be as useful as possible if we're not able to get these insights to the right place and to the right people where they're actually needed. And that is why we use something called visualizations, which for example are charts and different graphs, to present our findings. We can use tools like Excel, Tableau or Python again to create effective data visualizations. There's a reason why they say one image tells more than a thousand words and the same applies to data visualizations. Now we're not just going to make beautiful graphs, we also compile our findings in a report. This is something that we often should have done along the way as well, as well as you know documenting our procedure so that it can be recreated and traced. Think about the scientific method, this is data science after all. The people we share our findings with are often not data experts, so perhaps they're not even that technical at all. So we try to break down complex findings into simpler terms to make it easier for anyone to understand. Now your stakeholder could be super technical and they want to hear all the details, but in most cases, understandably, they just want a concise and effective version of your insights. Here is also where your presentation skills come in. Now presentation, it is not just about the words that you say, but it's about how you actually communicate. And this is something that you can practice and train just as I'm doing right now. And let's take it all from the beginning. So first we define the question, we gather the data, we clean it, we process it, we analyze it, and finally share the results. And perhaps also we take some action on these results. But I wanna emphasize that it's not always this straightforward and all the steps are not always necessary. And you may also go back and forth between the steps. It's just an overlying concept. It's not, you know, the specific details for each case. I'm gonna leave some helpful resources in the description, including a free data analyst roadmap for beginners with no degree or experience required. Thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one, which should be on the screen somewhere here if you can find it. I would love to see you over there.